Hey guys, good morning. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream this morning. Good to have you on. I hope you had a great weekend. You know, don't the weekends just go by go by way too fast? I it's funny. I remember when I first got into voiceover and I was doing it and doing it full time and uh, feeling like the days just ran into one another. I, I mean, whether it was Saturday or whether it was Monday. I mean, it just it just all felt the same to me. And I think it was because I was just kind of working. Uh, good morning, Ron. I was working pretty much nonstop. And uh, so it was hard to distinguish. And plus, I was always at home. There was no break between my home and where I used to go into work. And so that kind of played tricks on my mind. But, you know, fast forward a number of years later and um, where I have a rhythm to my business and uh, I pretty much protect my weekends from my work. And uh, now I really and I love my work, but I really I love weekends. I just I, I love uh my favorite tradition is, <clears throat> excuse me, my favorite tradition is Vicky and I go out for breakfast on Saturday morning. And what we used to do when we lived in Illinois, we would take turns with our three grandkids. We would take them out individually. We rotated so they could have some just personal time with their grandma and grandpa to, you know, just to talk and get the attention, you know, that they wanted. And, and um, so that was special. So we don't have that now living apart, which is, which is really hard. But we did get a chance to spend... Spent a lot of time, went up to Cleveland uh, to spend the afternoon with my oldest son on Saturday. So that was nice. That was nice. And yesterday was a nice day. So um, anyhow, happy Monday. Welcome to a brand new week, a week full of new opportunities. I hope things are off to a good start for you today. And um, a new topic for today. Today's topic, best tips for a great voiceover website. We touched on voiceover websites uh, a week or two ago, and I talked specifically about um, naming your website. And, and my basically my tip there was just make, keep it simple. Use your name or something, uh, you know, uh, that includes your name. For me, it's buildawees.com. There's not a lot of buildawees out there. There's a few, not many. So I don't have a lot of competition. But if somebody else had that, I would use buildawees voice or Bill DeWeese VO, or Bill DeWeese voiceover.com, or, you know, something along that line. So I would keep it simple. But beyond that, let me share, share some tips for you. First of all, if you use, if you hire somebody, now, of course, with GoDaddy and Wix and all of the Squarespace, all the other places out there, they're becoming more do-it-yourself friendly. And so many of you, that's the direction you go. But I also know folks who get, you know, frustrated along that path and want somebody who really, you know, understands websites to do it for them. And and if that's the direction that you go, just find somebody that um, vet them carefully, get references, make sure that they are reliable and that they are trustworthy because your webmaster holds a lot of power. And if they want to make life difficult from you, hey, Rob, what's up? Matt, all right, Mark down in Wilmington, North Carolina. All right, hey, Steve, Marilyn, all right, good deal. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it. And if they want to hold you hostage, they can, and there's not a lot, and that's happened to me before. And um, it's it was awful, you know, and it really, even I'm still paying the price for that today because it's it's taken years to kind of reclaim my online reputation with the search engines. Um, uh, because if you let, if your your website goes bad over time because of viruses and and all the stuff that people can do to it. And if your webmaster doesn't tend to all of that stuff, it can take years to to reclaim uh, having a clean website with though the um, I don't want to make this overly complicated, but you know if your website becomes overgrown with weeds in a digital sense, uh, it can become marked as unsafe when people go to find you. And I still get that on occasion with mine years afterwards. And he's been, my, my guy's been working on this hard for years. And it just takes, it takes a while to reclaim that. So be careful with that. Um, and by the way, let me just give a plug for, for my man, Jeff Bianchi at VOWebsites.com. VOWebsites.com. Uh, we set that up together. Specifically, if you go to VOWebsites.com, you're immediately given anything that you do with him. And by the way, he's already, first of all, he's He's great. He's fantastic, and he's extremely reasonable. But he will give you, on top of that, the the Deweese discount when you use VOWebsites.com. So 
So there's that. Beyond that, though, um, when it comes to your voiceover website, a few tips is make sure that it's focused on voiceover. So in other words, if you're a singer, you're an actor, you have a dog grooming business, you know, whatever, don't include those things on your voiceover website. Um, at least make sure it's a different page. Like for instance, uh, let's say I'm an actor and I'm a singer and I want to have websites for all this stuff. Uh, I, I could, you know, I could do buildawees.com as kind of my general catch-all and then have one page like buildawees.com slash voice. That could be my voiceover page, buildawees.com slash acting. That could be my my acting website. And then those are the pages that I send out. What you don't want to do, you don't want to direct somebody to a catch-all website. You want to make it very clear. You you want to create the impression that this is what you do. Not that it's, it's like, imagine this, you're driving down the interstate and um, you decide that you want, I don't know, you want some ice cream. And so you see the sign. And of course, this would happen in a place more like probably like Tennessee or someplace down south where you might see um, gas, clothing, Western boots, and ice cream. And you're like, okay, are these guys really any good at ice cream or is this, you know, they just threw a whole bunch of stuff in one, one space and they're just trying to sell as much stuff as they can. You, you want to specialize and you're, at least you want to market in a way that, that shows that, that you're good at what you do. And it's not just one of a ton of things that you do. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. Secondly, keep the, keep your website clean. Take a minimalist approach. It don't take the, um, the philosophy that more is better because it's when it comes to marketing, more is not better. People have limited uh, attention. Uh, they have limited time. And when it comes to marketing, in other words, if they're just, if they're, if they're looking at for somebody to do voiceover, they're scanning, they're scanning your demo. They're scanning your website. They're not taking an hour on a hundred different people to figure out who they want. At least it would be highly uncommon for somebody to do that. So, and what I mean by that is don't feel like you have to write a complete biography, an autobiography on yourself. If you, you know, if you, if you're going to, to say something about yourself, keep it short, sweet, keep it on point as it relates to voiceover, keep all of your important stuff above the fold. I mean, what's above the fold? It means that don't make them scan down, uh, scroll down to get to the, to the most important stuff. What is the most important stuff? Well, at the top of that list is your demos. Do not make them click extra times or, or scroll to get to your demos. You've got to make it as dead simple as absolutely possible. Make sure that they can hear your demo or your demos by just simply, they see it when they go to your website, they can click once the demo plays. If you're making them click more than once, if you're making them scroll, you're losing people. And so, you know, you don't, you don't want to do that. The other thing is stick with what you got. Don't worry about what you don't. If you have major nationally known Fortune 500 credits, include those. That's great. You know, um, once I had uh, accumulated clients like, you know, Disney and Walmart and Chevrolet and John Deere and United Airlines and, and so on and so forth, I began to use those. But when you don't have them, don't use them. Don't worry about it. Don't make up stuff. Don't put stuff on there you haven't done. And uh, if Dairy Queen is a cre credit, that's fine. But if it was the local Dairy Queen, don't include that. You, what you're, you're wanting to posi position yourself to look as big as you can, truthfully. Uh, so don't, you know, d just don't put stuff in that makes you look like you have not worked outside of your local market. Uh, you know, I have a short thing on my studio. I just list some of my studio equipment. That's great. If you want to do that, you know, if, if what you have, you, if you feel it's list worthy, in other words, it makes a positive impression on the person that, that's, uh, that's looking. Uh, in terms of pictures, I'm not a fan. You know, I, this is debatable. You do, do what you feel best with because there are plenty of people who are very successful who have a headshot on their website, especially West Coast people. West Coast people love their headshots. Uh, it's, it's kind of cultural because I think it's an acting thing. Voiceover, I just don't see the relevance. How I look, how you look has nothing to do with how you sound. I don't want people being prejudiced before they have a chance to hear me. So, you know, let's say they look at my picture and they're looking, you know, I don't want a guy 
you know, that's has that's that white that has that much gray hair that's not thinner. Well, what does that have to do with my voice? It has nothing to do with anything. So how you look doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how you sound. And um, I want them to hear my voice and then make a judgment. <clears throat> like, that's not the voice I want. Great. That's no problem. But I don't want them to be prejudiced. You don't want them to be prejudiced before they've had a chance to, to hear your voice. Because it's human nature. We do that all the time. I, when I worked in radio, and this is what turned me on to that whole thing, I would do a lot of live events. And uh, people would, you know, always always coming up to introduce themselves and let they know let me know they listen, which was really nice. But you know what the number one comment was? You don't look anything like you sound. What you know, what does that mean? <laughs> well, here's what it means. You cannot help but have a mental image. When you hear a voice, whether you want to or not, like when you listen to the radio, in your mind's eye, you have a you know what that person look you think you know what that person looks like. It's just what we do it automatically. And then usually when we see the person, it's like, oh, they don't look anything like what we thought they did based on how they sounded. Well, I, I don't want the opposite to happen. I don't want somebody to see me and think, oh, well, then he sounds this way. They don't know that. They just don't know that. Um, so that's why I, I don't want to, 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 to bias them before they've even had, even had a chance to hear my voice. So you know, again, keep it simple. Keep everything that's most important, meaning your demos, above the fold. Keep your website name simple. Use your name uh, or um, a derivative of that, you know, like Bill Deweese Voice, Bill Deweese VoiceOver. Um, get a good webmaster. If you don't have one, check out viawebsites.com, Jeff Bianchi. And uh, don't don't clutter your website. If you do use a headshot, if you feel the need, you you need a, a headshot, you know, get, try to get something that's professional. Um, I, I, again, I'm a minimalist when it comes to voiceover websites. I think less is more. I think simple, professional. Um, don't try to be fancy. Don't try to be cutesy. Um, you want them, the primary purpose of your website is this, and I'll close with this. It is for somebody to listen to your demo because nothing happens until they hear your demo. That in voiceover, that's it. That's 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 the game that we're playing. End game is for end game is for them to hire you, but we know that that doesn't happen until they hear your demo. The opportunity is not presented until they've heard your demo, and then they make a determination whether you should even have an opportunity, meaning to even audition. So the demo is that's the game that we're playing, and so whatever it takes for them, if you have to put a big button that fills the whole screen that says "click here for demo," and I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's that's the thing. If your demo is like one of a, a hundred things on your website, you're making things way difficult for yourself. So keep it very simple, keep it very focused, and that will help uh, move things in your direction. And uh, oh man, we're Chicago and Indy and Bangladesh. All right, all right, super. Good to have you here this morning. Romania, Egypt, Serving a worldwide audience this morning. I love it. Hey, guys, I, again, I know I say this every morning, but I mean it. And that is, it means a lot to me that you guys show up for this. And I, I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks for your comments, as always. And uh, I wish you guys great success in voiceover. That's, you know, I'm here to, to present information that uh, will empower you to be successful, to be profitable as a voiceover talent. So thanks again. Take care. Have a great day. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon.